Welcome to Prey Moon Crash. This is DLC for Prey. I had a really hard time grasping the concept of this DLC. It didn't click with me until I heard it described maybe three or four different times in kind of different ways. At first it sounded kind of strange and like why would I even play this? But then it started to dawn on me what made it so interesting. To try to transfer that to you, the viewer, in case you have no idea what this DLC is and, and how it works, um, I guess the best thing to do would probably be to read this description from the Prey dev team here on New Game. Prey Moon Crash is everything you loved in Prey, the gameplay, narrative, and atmosphere, but with an exciting twist. In Moon Crash, you'll be making repeated runs through an ever-changing simulation of the Pythias moon base. Each run will present new combinations of enemies, hazards, and loot. You might die a lot, but you'll also grow stronger and unlock new characters and gear to face these challenges. We hope you'll enjoy uncovering the mysteries of Pythias, what happened to its crew, and how to escape with your life. As always, thanks for playing our games. Now, if that description was the only thing I knew about this, I wouldn't be terribly interested. Hearing about unlocking new characters and going through a similar area repeatedly with the different characters sounds... It, it doesn't sound like what I want from Prey. What I want from Prey is really a hand-authored story content, and this sounds very repetitive, right? At least it did to me. But let's get through the intro, and maybe this will make more sense. Uh, let's be in a new game. So I have played, but only for a couple minutes, just to check settings. So basically going into this fresh. This is Basilisk. Hello. This is Basilisk to Gasmo Module 13. We are sending two classified pieces of technology we recovered from Transtar's moon base. They should be arriving in a few moments. One is an operator containing a backup of the base. It's a simulation of all the research data, company secrets and connectomes from employee brains. We picked you because it's protected by a lot of encryption. Fortunately, it comes with a looking glass visor, so you'll be able to search the sim visually. You'll be plugging into the moon base as it was, seeing it through the personnel that was stationed there. There's a lot to do. I'm sending your orders along so you can check them off as you go. Oh, and congratulations. I am pleased to inform you that executing these orders will fulfill your contract. After you recover the data, we're going to pick you up. So great news, you'll be with family soon. Okay, M13, you're the expert. The delivery is docking now, so I'll leave you to it. Transport craft African B KTL 17, commencing docking procedure. Please stand by to receive payload. Hey, I recognize that sound. One of the sounds we just heard when it was undocking the payload or whatever was the sound of one of those uh, one of those grenades that like sucks everything into it. All right, so here's the operator and the visor that we need. So, just from that introduction, you probably have a little bit of an idea of what's going on. It's uh, basically taking it, it kind of mirrors the original Prey uh, in a kind of funny way, where just like in the base game we're entering a simulation, except this time we explicitly know it's a simulation and are are told that rather than finding out near the end of it. But again, it still probably isn't quite clicking if you've never heard of this before, exactly how this is really going to shake out with different characters and like what, what are we going to be doing, right? But just hold on a little bit longer. Once we go to select our character for the first simulation, I think it'll start to click a little bit better, hopefully. Before we enter the simulation, let's take a look around. It sounded really disturbing and dystopian, us being out here. It almost sounded like we were practically a prisoner. I don't know if we're literally a prisoner, but they said, like, congratulations, this is going to fulfill your contract. You'll be able to come home to your family. As if I have to stay out here? Like, I'm forcefully being kept away from my family until I fulfill the contract? I mean, that's... Sounds like this is a prison in space. It's horrifying. So let's take a look around our living space. Looks pretty shabby. 
I wonder how long we've been here. There's duct tape over all sorts of stuff. Cargo is just a cardboard sign up there. Oh, this is... This whole thing is the shower? Where does the water come from, though? Do you have to, do you have to get your water from the sink? There's no shower head. Wow. That's the prey I know and love. Oh, is that? Day yeah, that's days. Days and days being ticked off. Oh. No, put it back. <laughs> okay, sure. I forgot this isn't gone home. You can't just put stuff back gently. You can either drop it straight down or throw it violently. Oh, sorry, sorry kid, I tried. Yeah, that's good enough. Is that a is that a report card? For the kid? A plus, A, A, B minus, A plus, A. Chemistry, English, something, algebra, physical education. Can just barely read a couple of them. I'm going to be doing this, by the way, a lot, where I try to pick up an object or something and I just end up moving to the side. Because I'm so used to pressing E to pick up and use things, but in Prey it's F. E is just lean. So, sorry about that. To do. Water plant? Clean bathroom? Something. Shower. Not done. It's a hell of a view. The new pharaohs. Or pharaohs? Excerpt from a book about indentured servitude. Oh, that sounds appropriate because that sounds like what this character is going through. The Rise of Corporations, discussed in such books as Pure Evil by Tracy Webb and Your Number's Up by... by... Jan? Jan Johnson? Discuss many challenges to humanism in a world driven by profit. What even these social scientists didn't see coming was a new way of collecting bargaining based on relinquishing innate human rights in exchange for better benefits, wages, pensions, and lifestyles. A trend in employee contracts, especially among exciting high-profile companies like Transtar, now onboard recruits via enticements and compensation offered nowhere else. But the clauses lurking in these contracts provide for punitive debts, which the employee must pay the company should he or she fail to meet plan. This can lead to a state of indentured servitude, which the contract gags the employee from discussing and prohibits uh, arbitration against. Aha! So we are an indentured servant. Oh god, look at that like piles of food dust and wrappers around this thing. Aside from me, I think this is the one living thing in this entire godforsaken thing. Sorry, plant. I tried to put you down. Starbender Cycle 2, Book 1, Rebirthed from the Star Womb. I remember these books, they're like pulpy sci-fi. You can read that if you'd like. Although first, I just want to read this part. A crash like a train made of screams running headlong into a school full of glass children. Trevor Pulsar winced as the deafening sound blinded him. Sticky. Trevor was sticky and ached from head to boot. Good stuff. All right, let's get going. Let's put these things in a place. Oh, we got a couple emails. Reminder from Basilisk. 
This is just a friendly reminder, 5.0231, operative shall diligently pursue to the company's reasonable satisfaction, completion of the data acquisition in accordance with the contract schedule, failure to meet satisfaction, blah, blah, blah. Failure to meet satisfaction will extend said contract for a duration equal to time lost by the company, blah, blah, blah. I know you're looking forward to seeing family again, and a setback at this point would be unfortunate. Fuck you. Congrats. Nice work up there. Despite the cost, we've dispatched a delivery to you, including a flower from your wife's garden back home. Everyone appreciates your hard work, including me. You're really chipping away at that contract. Thanks. That is horrifying. Let's get stronger. Alright. Can beat Basilisk up if we see him. Okay. So, it's really the description for the first and only character we can choose at the beginning of the game. Volunteer Andreas Alekna. Andreas's mind is brimming with psychic potential waiting to be unlocked, but repeat exposures to Neuromod technology has left his body frail. As the last volunteer test subject on the Pythias moon base, Andreas hopes to escape and see his young son again. Key abilities, kinetic blast, super thermal, backlash, burrow. Start out with T-Ration and a Psy Hypo. Uh, I don't think I have any abilities progressed at the moment. 100 size, 75 health. Story objective. Escape with a volunteer through the mimic portal to unlock their story objective. So there's all these other characters that we'll be able to unlock later. Riley Yu, Vijay Bhatia, Claire Witten, and jo Joanne Winslow. For now, gotta play this character. So there's a couple interesting things going on here. I have to admit, I've forgotten some of the details that makes this so interesting, <laughs> so please forgive me, but things do carry through from one character to the next, so they are not, like, you don't just play as a character and then when you play as a different one, everything is reset and everything is exactly the same. There's a sort of, I, I guess almost like a, it reminds me sort of like a rogue a roguelite sort of style thing where the actions that you do in one run will carry over into maybe better abilities or better equipment or other or better characters that sort of thing i don't know if the loadout can change i do believe that the items that you pick up as one character affects the items that are available as the next meaning if you say pick up a health pack as one character i believe the next character will not be able to pick that health pack up anymore it'll be gone because it's been taken so your objective is well i guess the main objective is to unlock more information about this character, I think, to do the thing that we need to do for Andreas. And then we'll unlock future characters. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this all plays out, but I'm, I'm convinced that it plays out in an interesting way, so sorry for that vague description. It's one of the reasons I kind of worry about this DLC and, you know, like, how, how well it's sold, because I don't think it's very easy to market, or at least it hasn't been to me. Maybe it'll make more sense as we play. Yeah, and then there's some sort of, like, currency thing. Like, I don't even know what this currency is, but purchases, loadout, chipsets, total, nothing at the moment. So there's a bunch of stuff that's that we'll see. Attention all Typhus crew members. This is an emergency broadcast. Please report to designated escape pod stations and prepare for evacuation. If you are unable to reach an escape pod, security will track your position as they conduct a final sweep before launching. Yeah, so I think you may be perhaps time limited actually on how long you have till you can get to that uh, um, escape pod before it leaves without you. So you kind of have an interesting time pressure, I think. If you don't make it to that, then that may mean that you can't finish the story objective for the character. That's not to say you don't accomplish anything. There's other things to accomplish, I believe. But there's just a lot of little things going on. There's a whole economy and everything. Also, another interesting thing about this, especially for me, is the fact that you get to play all these different characters with different abilities. Like, this one is all about Psy abilities. Is going to force me to play in ways that I never played in the original Prey. In the original Prey, I settled into... Um, 
a very guns only type of character mostly focusing on the shotgun i just upgraded that thing to hell and back did really well with that even on a hard difficulty and i didn't get a single uh typhon neuromod ever but that also means i missed out on a lot of interesting gameplay possibilities so this is going to kind of force me to use all sorts of things that i'm not used to using which i think should be really fun all right you may hear something do you hear that ticking noise this is about as far as I played. I just messed around in this room for a couple minutes. There is one of those things in this room. I believe it's you. Gotcha, little fucker. Actually, there might be another one. I'm hoping this DLC is not made with the expectation that you're kind of a prey veteran. You know, sometimes DLCs are made with the expectation that you've just finished the main game and then you're going into the DLC, so you're pretty skilled already. I am not, because it's been a long time since I played the original Prey. Ventilation storage and some silence pistol ammo fabrication plan and silence pistol fabrication plan. Oh, I see plus that currency. So just picking up stuff gives me that type of currency? Whatever I use that currency for? Typhon material detected. No Typhon detected. Right, I gotta go back to being scared that every single box and coffee cup is a freaking... What are they called? I know they're Typhons in general, but what are these things called specifically? I, uh, mimic. Yeah, I'm worried everything's a Mimic now. Typhon Gates. Typhon Gates create an impassable force field when they detect the presence of Typhon or Typhon material. Use the control terminal to mark any nearby Typhon. Note, with enough Typhon abilities installed, you will register as Typhon by the Typhon Gate. EMP or electrical-based attacks can temporarily disable Typhon Gates. Okay, so it sounds like there's a similar kind of uh, pressure with the gates where if you're Typhon enough, they stop you, similar to... Was it the turrets that if you were Typhon enough, they would shoot at you or something? In the original game? Oh, right. Low gravity. Okay. So this is exactly as far as I played before. I have not played past this. It's a hell of a view, isn't it? I know I'm probably missing the escape pod by taking in the view and going slow and reading stuff, but I don't care. It's fine. bypass the gate if need be. I guess since it's low gravity, I could probably fall from pretty much any height and be fine, right? Secrets? Nope. I don't think I start out with any of my psionic abilities. I think I need neuromods to get them. I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is my... What is it called? The psy psychoscope or something? Like the helmet thing? It can zoom in, it can identify creatures and stuff. I can carry that if I'm strong enough. Is there secrets under it? Yeah, 50-something gained. I really want to know what that currency's called. Oh, the light turns off when you pick it up. Sorry. I didn't mean to hit them. I 
wonder how big the moon base is. All oh, right. I forgot the corpses sometimes look like this. Horrifying. Before I can throw this. Not bad. Skeletal repair kit. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, it's the only weapon I have. Wait, there's a Typhon in range? Oh, press to track. <laughs> oh, you want to be a moon rock, do you? <laughs> Clever little bastards. I wonder if there could be secrets up there. Oh, wait a minute. Holy shit! Oh my god! I must have got really lucky with the moon rock that I picked up. Wow, they're like all moon rocks. I mean, they're like all mimics. Right, no need to do anything. It just automatically disables itself and it doesn't detect any typhons. So, I suppose that means if I'm in danger and I need to run, I guess the best thing to do would be probably to run past one of these gates because I would be perfectly safe on the other side of it. It would automatically shut itself. the main crater. Use the security station to find an available escape pod. Note. Typhon lures. Until those kill towers are working, Typhon lures are still our best bet for drawing them away from the gates. I already put a request in for the lab techs to fab more. Right, these things that I basically never used in the original game. Emits a psycholuminescent signal that entices Typhon to move towards the lure for a short period of time, combined with other weapons or tactics to escape, ambush, or observe Typhon from a safe distance. Can be thrown or fixed. I'm just scared about all these moon rocks. Something moving around out there. Some sort of a little craft. Wait, what do I do with this? The 
glue charge utilizes the same technology developed by Transtar for the glue cannon, disabling and or immobilizing targets without harming them, but targets a much larger area with a single detonation. As with the cannon, it can also extinguish flames, temporarily stop electric arcs, and create climbable platforms. It can be thrown or affixed to stationary objects. Huh. So instead of a glue cannon, it's a glue grenade. Hmm. Suit integrity, dram damage, trauma. Uh, right, I need to repair my suit as well as my own health. Gotta remember all this stuff. I think we do that with spare parts, right? And we could do that from in here? I could. So I could eat some food. Let's do that. Good. Um, I think Z is repair kits though, right? Yeah, no suit patch kits, so I can't do anything to repair my suit at the moment. What's my status? Do I have like a... Oh, here it is. 64 out of 100. Okay. What do I have for items? Let's auto-sort this. Like, I keep getting these spare parts. What are these for? Yeah, they're used to make repairs, but not for the suit, I guess. can split them. Yeah, I guess they're not for the suit. That's the sort of details I just totally forget. Can you save wherever you want, by the way? I'll only save and exit. Okay. Another one. I see its red eye. That one's a science operator. Let's leave it alone for now. Oh, glue turret. Hello, my little friend. Maybe I'll, uh, get the thing to come over here. Ooh. I don't know what that was. I think it's on the roof. Oh, it's you. Come here. Remember, they when they explode, they hurt me. That hurt. That hurt's gonna be super helpful. Q beam. That's that huge laser gun, right? If I remember right, this thing goes through ammo really quickly. Fires a concentrated beam of unstable particles that will eventually cause the target to explode. Oh yeah, that's right, the thingies wiggle when you move back and forth. What's going on over there? It's like data corruption. 
part of the simulation we can't access, maybe? Oh yeah, so I guess in case it isn't clear, I think when you die, sort of like a roguelite, when you die, you die. Like you can't load your save and come back here and try again with the same character. You'll have to start the simulation again. So it's sort of, kind of, permadeath? It's another corrupted place over there. Suit repair kit. Recycler charge? Yep, I know how those work. Your uniform offers some degree of protection, but it's not fail safe. Z. Okay, up to 86 on my suit. Look, it's moving. Shoot it. I gotta leave my flashlight on, it gets pretty dark. Oh god. Is that one of those psych things that floats up there? It's purple. pot evacuation route. Shotgun! Narrow mod. Disruptor stun gun. Okay, uh, I guess we gotta use our first narrow mod, huh? Regeneration 1. Regenerate up to 10 health immediately after taking damage. That sounds really good. Oh right, it goes in the eye. Ugh. I wonder if I have to actively use that ability or if it just happens naturally? It sounds kind of like a passive thing. I don't actually know how using abilities work because I literally never got them in the original playthrough I did. Let's go around some other areas before I commit to going inside of anything.
do I want to shoot at that thing? I could probably kill it with a laser beam, honestly. Probably? Do I want to risk it? Hmm. Ooh, I have an idea. Here, let's try this. Not sure what their range is, but if I can't kill it quickly with a laser beam and it starts coming towards me, maybe they'll help? It might be too big to really glue down, though, but uh, we'll see, I guess. I could throw a recycler charge at it. I could, of course, lure it away, but I'd rather kill it. Yeah. Yeah, alright, let's try this. Wait, shit. It's out of range, isn't it? Didn't use up as much ammo as I thought. Another narrow mod. So within this track here, I could get more, um, like increase my psi pool size. I'm not actually running out of psi yet though, so let's not worry about that. Let's get a kinetic blast. A physical blast that deals up to 50 damage and pushes away anything within 5 meters of the targeted area. Right, so... Some powers are triggered instantly by pressing mouse 2. Some powers are targeted. To stop time and enter side targeting mode, press and hold mouse 2. Use mouse to aim. Release mouse 2 to execute powers on the targeted location or press F to cancel. Powers can be equipped from the favorites wheel. Hmm. Interesting. I've never done that in the original game, so that's all new to me. But I assume that was in the original game. Whoa. Oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> what is it doing? Oh god, I made it angry. I didn't realize I was actually going to use the ability, just like, I, oh fuck, I blew up my friends, I'm sorry, you helped me so much. I can't even repair them, I need repair too. Fuck. Right, well, let's try that again. So you just released a fire. Can lean. Interesting. That's really interesting, actually, how it works. So, it lists a whole bunch of controls that you can do, but basically what it's trying to say for the most part is you can move around like normal, and then just release right-click to do the thing, or press F to cancel. And although time stops when you hold down right-click, it'll actually move so long as you're doing some sort of an action that moves your character. So look at the sparks on the turret. They've stopped, so it's completely stopped time, but look what happens when I lean. Time advances just long enough for me to complete the lean, and then it stops again. Same with the jump. That's a pretty cool way to do it. Yeah, that's really interesting. Sorry, friends. How you select between multiple different abilities when you're in the targeting thing. It doesn't matter for now, but I'm curious. Proximity warning. 
I don't think it's gonna hurt me. I think it probably just disables itself when I get near. Error. Non-harvestable material detected. Fair enough. Please tell me that's just a helmet and not a head. Think so? I love the movement in this game. It feels really good, especially being low gravity. I love that you can climb up to things. As long as your arms can reach it, you can pull yourself up. What happens when I try to enter one of these glitches? Ah, uh, you can't. Just an invisible wall. It's really cool looking. controls coagulating gel fabrication plan my god what are you doing up here what are you gonna harvest up here go away You're scaring the hell out of me Okay, well, I think I'll end this episode here. Yeah, this hasn't given you a great idea exactly how the game is going to work, and to be honest, I don't remember exactly how the game is going to work. I think to fully understand how the loop really operates, we're going to have to go through at least one full iteration of this character, have them die or escape or whatever is going to happen with them, whatever their fate is, and see what happens on the next character or the next playthrough of this character, whatever's going to happen, to see like what you know, what changes carry through, how the whole economy works between characters, because I don't fully grasp it yet. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.